Hello! The other day on the forum, someone was asking about torn edges and punch-through effects in PowerPoint. And there are a lot of great tutorials on Photoshop out there. So I was playing with it and kind of created this little punch-out element here that you see on the, the Spaceman Smiley Slides. I was playing last night with it. And here's actually the element that I created, and I created it in Photoshop brought it into PowerPoint 2010 where I could then apply some other neat uh, artistic effects to it, which is kind of fun. It gives you the opportunity to change the color and whatnot. But overall, it gives you the opportunity to create this world within a world like I did with Captain Smiley. So what I could do is I could say, all right, I want this gentleman to ride out of this scene into another world here. And I use this hexagon shape because it gives you the opportunity to create another hexagon such as this. And I've been playing with this a little bit here. And what I can do here with this hexagon shape is I can format it. And what you can do, by the way, if you'd like, add a piece of clip art. So maybe you add a cityscape. You copy that to your clipboard, and then you are going to go to that hexagon and do a picture fill from the clipboard. And it's going to fill it. Bring that element to the front. Boing! There you go. Now you got this guy's about to ride off out of his world into another. Now, not everyone has a Photoshop, so how would we create this type of effect in PowerPoint 2010? Well, what we are going to do is we are going to start once again with a hexagon shape. This is going to be a placeholder for us. I'm going to make it black so it's easy to see. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a shape. I'm going to use this freeform tool. Okay, so I'm going to come on in here. And what I'm going to do, ah, stop. Let's get rid of that guy. Freeform tool. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come on just the inside edge. I want to match this edge as best I can, just on the inside. I want a little bit of an overlap on each side here, and I'll show you that why in just a little bit. I'm going to click once, and I'm going to hold down, and I'm going to freeform draw this. Now, it's really important to hold and draw and not do a lot of clicking, because what we want to have happen at the end is when I get down into the edge, it's going to fill for me automatically. If it does not fill, this tutorial will not work, so make sure that you get this fill here. If you get a, just an empty outline, start again, click once, do your free form, and then make sure that when you let go of that mouse, it fills for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the outline, and I'm going to size this up here so that it's roughly on the edges. Again, I want just a tiny little bit of overlap because on the corners, I want my picture to have a little buffer to be able to uh, play with the size behind it. Not the most realistic, but it'll work for me. Now what we can do is, again, we want to make sure, here's the key part, make sure that your angle is fairly close here on these edges. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and hold my control key down. I'm going to make some copies of this. And I'm going to line this up on each of the edges. You'll notice I've got some overlap here. I'm going to do that here on the other three sides and let you do the same, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have got all my edges aligned. Again, a little bit of a buffer here on each of the corners. I'm going to get rid of that interior pentagon because that was my placeholder. Now, you want to make sure that you've got roughly the same shape inside here. What we are going to do is select these five outsides, and we're going to use the Shape Union tool. Thank you, Jeanette Brooks from Articulate, for sharing that in a recent uh, screener. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do with this is such. I'm going to format this shape because it is now one big shape merged together. And I'm going to go to my gradient fill. Now, David Anderson was playing around with this. And was, this is where the idea came from. So thank you, David. And what you want to have as best that you can is a little black shading right on the inside edges of all the sides here, a little black. And then you want to have sort of this highlight around the edge and give it some tips. So you can kind of decide and okay, play around with that best you can. What we're going to do from there is we're going to copy that out. We are going to paste it as an image. And then I'm going to come up to my artistic effects. I'm going to add the bubble wrap. Boom! Gives it that effect. But I'm going to do it once more here. I'm going to copy this once again, paste it yet again as an image. I'm going to get rid of this one behind. Okay. Here we go. And give it yet another artistic effect. So I can then start to this little crisscross etching. There we go. So there we have it. Now we have sort of this, again, it's maybe not quite as cool or quite as nice as the Photoshop item, but it's pretty darn close. And so to be able to do it in PowerPoint is a bonus. So once again, there we go. I'm going to switch that out for the other. Make it a little bit bigger here. If you have any questions, let me know. But uh, once again, doing this in PowerPoint 2010 is really great. Gives us the opportunity to do some Photoshop-type effects. Take care, everybody.